The optimal management for patients with DLBCL, thankfully, has been shifting over the past few years. After several decades of stagnation, we've now seen some improvements in randomized phase three trials, notably the first-line trial of the Polarix trial, which is evaluating polituzumab with RCHP uh, versus RCHOP, effectively polituzumab compared with vincristine, kind of a swap out, if you will, which showed an improvement in progression-free survival of 6.5%, but no increase in toxicity. And this is something that we've been waiting for for a long time to see some improvement over RCHOP. And, and I think that this will be something that will be a viable standard of care option for patients in first-line treatment. We've also seen in the second line that two of the three CAR T cells proved to be superior in randomized phase three trials. The Zuma 7 trial showed that axicaptogene Tilusa was uh, uh, more effective than high dose chemotherapy. And the TRANSFORM trial showed that lysocaptogene Marilusal was more effective than standard care therapy. So in first and second line treatment, we've had a shift in the management for our patients over the past few years. And also now we have FDA approvals in the second and third line of non-cell therapies, tafacitumab lenalidomide for second plus line, polituzumab plus bendamustine rituximab for third plus line, as well as longcistuximab to serine in third line. So the optimal management for patients with large B-cell lymphoma in, in my practice at an academic center still is a clinical trial is my preferred option. But thankfully, outside of the academic ivory tower and outside the clinical trial, we finally begin to move the needle.